everyone and welcome to snap take i know it's later in the day than usual but too bad we got a shocking ota buffs galore even the nerf is kind of a buff and we've got an exclusive tournament winning deck that no one else is going to talk about today let's get started we've got a jam-packed episode but we're also in the middle of our season pass giveaway we are giving away 15 black order black swan season passes black swan is a two three that makes all the one cost on reveal uh next turn all the one cost cards in your deck cost zero it's going to be a really powerful card if you'd like to win one of 15 the easiest way to do so is to hit the sub button right here leave a comment on this video you're entered to win a season pass any video between yesterday wednesday's video and this coming Monday, not Sunday, this coming Monday, let's fix that now, this coming Monday's video is an entry to win a season pass, there's also five more being being given away on Twitter, that's linked in the description to this video, and we're going to give away five more next week. In addition, we're doing a huge tournament, we have over 50 creators signed up, we're announcing a few a day, we're giving away a ton of great prizes in this tournament, and so we don't take a complete bath in terms of paying for it, we're asking for everyone to kick in $1. The easiest way to do that is our Patreon, patreon.com slash snap judgments, no Ian judgments. You can sign up $1. You're entered for the March tournament. We're launching March 2nd. That's when the tournament begins. Sign up is going to kick off in mid-February. Get on the Patreon now so you don't miss out. We're giving, um, we're doing pods of 32, a season pass to each pod winner, and the pod winners go on to a top cut where they can win even bigger prizes and the best of the best are going to compete we announced some creators yesterday if you want to check it out today we are announcing three more creators we've got the pirate king himself tucker we've got our friend lil robitussin and we've got burgeoning youtube star prashan so we've got three more great creators we are announcing for you today you want to find out some more creators that are in it check yesterday's video check tomorrow's video we'll have a huge list for you every 10 to 15 or so of everyone that's been announced so far we've got so many creators and more are signing up all the time compete with the best players in the world test your metal but also like hey if you're not like a super top-notch player it's one dollar what do you have to lose maybe excuse me maybe you'll learn something about the game maybe you'll learn something about yourself maybe you'll become a better player and hey Playing some of the biggest and best creators in Marvel Snap has got to be pretty cool, right? All right. Why should you sub? Well, we got all this stuff for you. Plus, we bring you three decks every single weekday. Hit that sub button. Help us fight the YouTube algorithm. That algorithm wants to just keep giving you the same big creators over and over. Help us by liking and subbing. Grow and reach more people. Our outline for today. We are going to go to questions of the day right after this, just like always. Then we're going to talk OTA. Then we're going to look at a deck from our friend Ava Zord. Ava is amazing. Ava is a Brazilian player, one of the top players in the world. Ava went on vacation and fell out of his usual perch in the top 10 of Marvel Snap, and he's climbing with a vengeance with the deck we're going to talk about today. We also have OTA decks. I have a deck for every card altered in the OTA right after that Ava section. Then we're going to look at a deck from Desmond. That's our tournament winning deck. Card Thwips is a monthly tournament. It's from Southeast Asia. Desmond is one of the best players in the world. Desmond has claimed the Card Thwips town, uh, excuse me, the Card Thwips crown for this month. Then we're going to talk about coming card changes. We know some cards that weren't changed in the OTA, but the change is coming thanks to Glenn. And we'll finish with our We Vote Wednesday deck. We Vote Wednesday was only yesterday, but the demand was clear. Freaking everyone picked Man Thing, so we're not going to waste time. We're just going to give you that Man Thing deck that y'all want so bad. This is from Genius Deck Builder, our friend and yours, Ika, who you can find on twitter.com slash Ika. We'll end as we do with shop and shoutouts. All right, there's a whole bunch of reminders, but this episode's going to be long because we got OTA. So if you're interested in a bunch of stuff about this channel, check here. There's all sorts of great stuff for you, including Series 4 or 5 tier lists, ways to optimize your spending, so on and so forth. Joe Pro asks what non-person card like Hulkbuster or Helicarrier I'd like to see and what it would do. So I want a card that when you play it moves every other card to another location real bad. And the card I want to do that is the Starjammer. I want Starjammers. I want the Starjammer's ship 
the star jammer itself to come down in a location and move everything in that location not everything i would suggest move every other card at that location somewhere else i think that would be amazingly cool it's what i want Honda Bob wants to know if I think Zabu needs a nerf. And no, I think early game plays need a buff. The reason Zabu sees so much play or so much more play than everything else is there's nothing else to do early in the game, really. A lot of the early game plays outside of like Deadpool have been pretty severely nerfed. Things like Kitty Pride, Angela, Elsa, so on. They're not really great early game plays anymore. So why not use Zabu or Ravona to try and skip the early game and get to the mid game fours, which is one of the most important cost slots. I don't think that's a thing that Zabu needs a nerf. I think the early plays need a buff. Skip already, Wonders of Second Dinner is nerfing gold bunders, uh, gold bunders, gold bundles, so people will spend on variants. Uh, yup, I think so. Um, they've announced that they think hoarding is a problem if people are hoarding too much, and they're talking about players like me, probably not players like you, dear listener, players at the end game that um, basically used to buy everything but now have so much of everything that they don't really ever need to spend again. That's me. I need to buy the season pass, and I never really have to look at anything else. Um, they don't want players like me buying the season pass, hoarding gold, buying a big bundle, and then extra buying nothing, right? They want me to buy variants. Albums are a way to encourage that. Having slightly worse gold bundles that we can't plan for is another way to um, make us stop hoarding. So I think that's exactly what's happening, to be completely honest. I don't think gold bundles will ever be bad but i doubt they'll ever be as good as they were at the start of them existing if you'd like your question read in tomorrow's video please leave one in the comments ota time thanks to carolus of marvel snap zone for this we have quite the ota it is all buffs yes i know that hulkbuster looks like a nerf it is not it is a buff first we are going to talk about luke cage luke cage goes from a 2-3 that only works in one location to a 3-4 that once more has his old ability and says your cards anywhere can't have their power reduced. That is an incredible buff. We know how strong Luke Cage was. He is harder to use now as a 3-4 than he was even as a 2-2. But that being said, his effect is important to have in the game. His effect couldn't be in the game when Blob was in the game in previous form. Blob's gone. Luke is safe to come back. Luke is back. I think Luke is going to go in a lot of decks and bring a lot of strategies back. It also is a huge buff to Man-Thing, which is the other reason we're talking about Man-Thing today. Hulkbuster apparently was one of the key cards in Deadpool, even though the top of ladder players that I know that play Destroy all cut Hulkbuster. Apparently the win rate did not suggest that, so we've got Hulkbuster going from a 3-5 to a 2-3, which is sort of a nerf, but the going down from 3-2 to two is humongous. Going from 3 to 2 means you can multi-spell with it. You can play on turn 3, just Deadpool and Hulkbuster alone. You can play uh, Deadpool on 1, Hulkbuster on 2, then eat it on turn 3 with a Carnage, a Deathlock, or whatever. All these plays are completely great. It lets it work better with um, move cards like Iron Fist and Ghost Spider. I think that this is ultimately a buff to Hulkbuster. I think that time will bear me out on this, that this is going to be a positive change for the card. Heimdall gets plus 1 power. Fine. Whatever. Um... He's basically as good as he was. Like, you're going to win some small percentage of games you wouldn't have otherwise with him. But I don't think this Heimdall change is huge. I think it's good, but I don't think it's huge. This moves him up to the right below Shang-Chi territory, where he is probably at his best. Spider-Man 2099 gets the max buff possible to 9 power. Basically, the max buff you can give him without making him Shang-Bait. And he gets one more cost which is a problem because now like there's only one real way to move him, right? I mean, I guess there's technically two. You can iron fist the turn before you play him. And if he's nine, then Dr. Strange has a reasonable shot at moving him. But like, you're kind of hoping not at that point, right? You don't really want to move him. You want to be moving like your vultures or your human torches that are way bigger than him by then. But that's not like a bad fail case, moving him and destroying a card that probably makes him like a five thirteen ish card most of the time, which is great stats. Um, but the main way you're moving him is Heimdall, so we've got a big move deck. They're saying basically don't run Vision in that deck, run 2099 in that deck if you're running Heimdall anyway. And like your opponent's going to have a problem because 2099 is going to make them play certain ways because he's a lot of power, right? And they're going to assume that a lot of power is going to destroy something in that other location. Then if you don't play Heimdall, you lose the destroy, but you've juked your opponent. I think this has reasonable power. People are going to poo-poo this, and I don't think it's great. I'm not even sure it's good, but it's better. 
Finally, we have Ghost Spider, who went from a 1-2 to a 3-5. Excuse me. <coughs> 1-2 to a 3-5, which means that Ghost now goes in Cerodex. It doesn't have to worry about Killmonger. It lets you be able to Enchantress. It lets you be able to Shang-Chi freely at the end of the game without worrying about throwing priority, which means you can more effectively run cards like Ms. Marvel and so on. Um, this is a really, really strong play on turn three in those decks where it just allows you to do good things. It makes you weak to Elioth, and but at least it's five power, so like it's still reasonably strong. Um, I don't know. Excuse me. At the end of the day, I think this is probably a little better, but it loses its main home with things like Valkyrie. So like, is it better? Because you don't really want a Valkyrie, a five power card, right? So, like, maybe there's some ongoing stuff. I think there's probably some Sarah stuff. This is now a really good replacement for Gladiator if you don't have Gladiator in those Sarah decks. But I'm not sure. This feels wrong. It feels like this needs more. I don't know what that more is. Like, maybe it needs to be a 3-6 to see play because 3-6 is enough power. Um, people are going to say this is a Surfer card. I don't like this in Surfer. I think Surfer fairly often wants priority. It is good at dodging um, Shadow King, right? But Surfer fairly often wants priority with cards like Juggernaut. And I think um, Ghost at that point, uh, like cards like um, Neg Negasonic, like Storm would really like to reveal first. There's enough in that deck that doesn't really, really want to go second. I can't think of anything that wants you to go second really in a uh, Surfer deck. So I don't think that this is where that goes, even though it's a decent stat line for it. You have Polaris, you have Spider-Man. Those are better for that deck. All right, we're on to our first deck, and then we'll look at decks from that OTA. We've got Avazord's Asgard deck. This is the deck that he has taken from 300 to 200 after his hiatus playing the game. Welcome back, Ava. And it is one of my favorite uh, Beta Ray Bill decks. This is just Beta Ray Bill good stuff. This is playing good stuff for tempo and winning the game because of it. You're fundamentally just trying to play good cards that get you ahead of rate. Jeff being amazing, Mobius stopping your opponent, Shang being Shang. Legion being a location answer. And at that point, Thor and um, Beta Ray Bill are just nice big cards that go well with Doom to in a location that, if you haven't played your hammers yet, let you lose priority to double Shang with Grandmaster win locations. Stuff like that is extremely strong. You can also use Grandmaster to double one of the hammers and get a really big card that's capable of soloing a lane. Magneto can ruin your opponent's stuff. It's just all around a lot of power and a lot for your opponent to play around. So this deck is built for Beta Ray Bill. Don't run this deck without it. Mobius can be armor. You lose a bit. You're better into destroy in some ways. You weaker to death, but better to the baseline stuff. Um, while you're protecting, you're like Thor and Beta Ray. And Grandmaster can be Quake. Grandmaster offers something different than Quake, but you ultimately just want an extra control card in that spot. We can also look at Shadow King for one of these cards. So this has a 57% win rate in high infinite, and Ava Great gained a plus 100 ranks. Turn one, you want to forge. I like forge into Jeff a lot. Don't be afraid to use Grandmaster to reforge. Um, Nico never goes on these lists because you sort of Nico whenever she makes sense. But a Nico toward the end of the game, especially like literally last turn, makes sense. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Because once in a while you'll get that demon or that plus two, and giving that demon or that plus two to a hammer is often game winning. Thor is better than Mobius on turn three, but some decks demand Mobius on turn three or four. Think if you see a Zebu, if you know they're going to Sarah, I would wait a turn to get Mobius down in those instances. Turn four, Beta Ray Bale is better than Thor, is better than Mobius. And then you have two twos if one is Grandmaster, which is where like, <coughs> I'm really sorry about that today. Um, whereas like, if you can Grandmaster that Forge, Grandmaster that Nico, um, I'm not always against Grandmastering that Thor at that point. Turn five is Jane or Legion. Sometimes Legion Scam can win the game on five. Sometimes you want to wait till six. Jane, if you have both Thors, is an easy, obvious play, especially if you haven't drawn a hammer on to, up to five. Turn six is Hammers with Grandmaster plus Shang. So you can double Shang or you can double either of the Hammers. That's generally better than Magneto, who equals Doom, depending on what you need to see. Oh, that's how we play the deck. Quick variant talk. We only have a few hips here. We have our Jeff hip, our Mobius hip, our Legion hip, and our Magneto hip. It's a four hipper. Sad to see it. I want to call attention to my Art Adam Shang-Chi because I've been using a lot of other Shang-Chis lately. It's gold. It's beautiful. I love it. I also have this Magneto in gold as well. Sorry, excuse me. This Doctor Doom in gold as well. 
Okay, OTA decks. We've got Classic Move first with Hulkbuster 2099 and Heimdall. Then we've got a Move Bounce with the same three cards. Then we've got a Heimdall Phoenix Force deck. Then we've got a Bounce Move deck with Hulkbuster. A Destroy with Hulkbuster. A Sarah Control with Ghost. A Cerebro 4 with Luke. And then we're going to end the video with one more Luke deck. All good, so we've got seven, well, technically eight decks for you with OTA cards. We're not going to do a full review of each. We're just going to talk about them and how the new cards make these decks better. Apparently, I'm coming down with something. I'm really sorry. My throat is tingly like crazy, so occasionally I'm going to cough. Please forgive me. Please excuse me. Um, I will take a cough drop before the next video. I promise. All right. This was not 10 and 2 today. This was 10 and 2 the day Hercules came out, and I still have this deck built. I play it all the time. It's one of my older decks at this point. Uh, I have to build a lot of new decks for testing, but I really enjoy it, so it has survived. And it got better because Dagger got her buff. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see that um, cards don't update right away on the deck trackers. Sorry about that. So um, Heimdall should be a 9, uh, 2099 should be a 5, 9, and Hulkbuster should be a 2, 3. All three of those things are huge buffs to this deck. You lose one turn to play Hercules here, but like you like you have to play Hercules on curve at four, but you can just skip Hercules if 2099 is better or play Hercules if he is better. Hulkbuster being able to be on curve after Torch is great. Hulkbuster being able to go with Torch or um, Ghost Spider on three after a dagger, after a multiple man is likewise great. You don't have to waste a turn waiting. All these things are extremely powerful. And of course, Heimdall having extra power is just nice. This is a deck I will be playing today, just so you're aware. I'm excited for this deck to just get a little bit better, because a lot of the times when it lost, it was losing by a power or two here or there, and that's just what this deck got. All right, we also have Bounce 2099. This is a nice, simple bounce list. Um, they don't usually run 2099. They usually run an extra cheaper card there. But hey, why not run 2099, right? It's got all three of these cards again. Hulkbuster is once more better on curve for your Torch dagger and multiple men um 2099 gives you something to do if you're missing stuff late right it's <clears throat> if you're going to be able to hulkbuster late if you dropped an iron fist as your last play on turn four then you've got a 2099 who can often just win you the game nine power is a lot killing a big card potentially is a lot you'll know whether you're, you're going to win there so you can snap right like they're not going to realize you can 2099 their face if you can do the iron fist trick with it before and that's a game-winning play. I personally think that there's a lot to like about this list. I think that Giant Human Torch is great and one of the more powerful things in the game to the extent where that is fundamentally what this deck is built on. Yes, it can build a big multiple man, but its goal is to build a big Human Torch by using Nico, uh, Venom, or Carnage to kill that torch. You can also make it big with Hulkbuster. You Phoenix Force, you move it around with Hercules, you get an extra move out of Heimdall. And then you have that giant human torch, <clears throat> and you either Heimdall for it to win a lane, while Heimdall now has a better shot at winning a lane himself, or Tribunal wins the game because you have a 100 power human torch, and then you have a Tribunal spreading that equally, so you have like 30 plus power in every location. This deck is stellar. I love this deck. It's great. It's super powerful. Our friend Safety Blade's gonna win an Infinity Ticket with it. He's gotten seven freaking, um... <coughs> again, I'm very sorry about that. He's gotten seven Infinity Tickets with variations on this deck, usually without Heimdall, but hey, Heimdall fits way better than he did yesterday in the show. Next up, we have a Hulkbuster Bounce move. This one doesn't run any of the other cards. This is a much more low-to-the-ground version that just says, okay, so I'll run Tribunal because I can get that huge Human Torch or get a bunch of big multiple mans everywhere and just split the power. Dagger also gets really huge. And Dagger's so much better when Dagger starts with base power. Like, for example, say three base power from Hulkbuster. That's now much easier to get. You can bounce all this stuff, do it over and over, drop Tribunal at the end of the game, and just say, thank you, I win. This is a thank you, I win button deck. It's so freaking strong. I really like it. Um, I'm not sure if Hulkbuster is in this deck in a week, though, because I might be replacing it with Black Swan and just saying my turn four play is Falcon plus Black Swan. Next up, we have Destroy. Hulkbuster is apparently a really good Destroy list, so why not just keep it in the dis this Destroy list? This one runs Taskmaster. It's all about a big Deadpool, but X-23 gives you other plays. Death and Null, obviously, are other plays. Grandmaster is now a staple in Destroy. Grandmaster will be in most Destroy decks going forward because it's, generally speaking, just better than running Deathlock. 
Grandmaster on Carnage or Venom gives you more power, gives you more ability, is more effective in general, not every game, but is more useful than Deathlock as long as you're seeing any destroy stuff. So Grandmaster is in these decks now. Enjoy, because he is real, real, real good in them. Hulkbuster is obviously again here for Deadpool, although you can do worse than dropping it on an X-23 or a Wolverine. It's also really fun with cards like Sinister London that like duplicate the card, where if you do Hulkbuster with Ven like only Venom in the location, it's going to re-trigger Venom when Venom respawns in the new location, which is hilariously powerful. Next up, we have Sarah Control with Ghost. Remember, Ghost is a 3-5, so Killmonger is good here. Um, You want Killmonger to go second as a general rule. They can carry you, but fine. If Killmonger goes second, it's more likely to kill more of their ones, especially against things like Thanos. Mobius ruins a lot of decks. Now, death-style um, death decks can occasionally lose priority by just killing all their stuff and keeping big in one location. Ghost says no thank you, which means Shang-Chi and Enchantress and Shadow King are absolutely like face slammers for them. The problem here is occasionally against some of these decks, you do want parity because you want to like shrink a Deadpool before it dies. And with Ghost, you can't do that, but you get the 3-5 to sort of bake up for that loss anyway. I think this is basically going to be a meta deck. It's one of the better decks. A version of this won the recent Lambie Open tournament. So I think this is great. If you're curious about that Lambie Open, we covered all top eight of the decks in Sunday's video. Next up, we have Cerebro 4. I built this. I threw it together. I'm not sure if it works at all. Um, I'm sure I did something wrong, but Luke is now a 2-4, and Luke likes Cerebro. So Sarah also has 4, which means I can play a lot of stuff. So um, we've got a cheap Cerebro Mystique, and making 4s become... Excuse me. Making 4s become 8s seems really good. Um, yeah, that's kind of it, right? Like, giant Captain Marvel good. Ms. Marvel gives you some reach with the deck, and then just the fours become big enough. Carnage eating Wolverine is, um, in fact, four for both of them. Um, or Colleen can discard Wolverine, and Carnage can eat something else. Excuse me, rocks happen, random stuff happens in games, and having Carnage is reasonably useful for stuff like that. So I think this deck is probably really good. I definitely think it's really cool and really spread out. I'm going to try it. I don't, I'm not good with Cerebro, so I'm probably going to fail with it, but I'm going to try it. All right, that's our OTA stuff. We ready to go on? Let's move on to our next deck, which is Desmond's first pit place card thwips, Loki. No one's going to talk about this deck because everyone's all about the new cards, but we're here to win, not here to just show you all cool decks, I promise you. The first deck was pretty cool, right? We've also got a really cool third deck, but this one is like a straight-up killer winner deck. It's got meta answers for everything. It is super strong. Desmond's one of the best players in the world, naturally still rocked with Loki. And in Lampy's tournament, the only type of deck that had two in the top eight was, you guessed it, Loki. Loki's still really strong. It is conquest week. This is a deck to play, and this is one of the best versions of that deck. Its fundamental plan is to, wait for it, play Loki and win. Sometimes you don't play Woki, Loki, Woki. Sometimes you don't play Loki, and cards like Mobius, Shang-Chi, and Rogue offer you enough counters so that Devil Dino can block your opponent and you can still win. All right, you need Loki and Zebu. At this point, those two are a pair. Zebu is probably the most important Series 4 card in the game to have. Buy it. Snowguard is great, but Maria Hill is a fine replacement. You lose a bit, but you'll be okay. Mirage could be Sentinel, and Mobius can be Quake. Those are our main changes for this deck. This has a 65% win rate with a, like, 0.6 cube rate, and it won the Card Thwips Issue 46 tournament. So, damn. So turn one, Quinjet is more or less equal to Snow Guard. It depends if you're going to try and Loki on three. If you're going to try and Loki on three, you'd rather Snow Guard. If you're going to Loki on four, you'd rather Quinjet. Turn two, Zabu over Mirage. Turn three, Loki, um, if you played Snowguard on one. It's better than Coulson, it's better than Cable, it's better than Mobius, which is better than Cosmo. And those last two depend on matchups. There's matchups, like if you're playing Destroy, all of a sudden dropping Cosmo is far more important, dropping Mobius is far more important than like a Cable or Coulson. Turn four, um, you want a Loki really bad, and then if not, you're doing the same place as turn three. Turn 5, if you don't think they're going to Shang as Devil Dino, you're still perfectly fine playing Loki most of the time on turn 5. Um, sorry, quick thought on turn 4. 
Loki on turn four after Zabu with Snow Guard is a brilliant play. You Snow Guard and then you Loki, you have a ton of cards to Loki. So turn five is Devil Dino if you don't think they have Shang. But if you're not going to Loki and you drop Devil Dino there and you can use it to grab priority, Cosmo can blow them out, which is worth knowing. You drop Cosmo in that Dino spot and Colson in like another spot gets nice and big and you're really, really good to go. If you had Zabu out, you can drop Cosmo in one spot for you and Shang in another spot or Rogue in another spot, and then you just win. Cool. That's how you play this deck. It is not as hard to play as you would think. I know people act like playing Loki is brain surgery. It's not. You just have to know how to play a lot of different decks. And if you do, you will be good with Loki. I think Loki is still OP. I'm going to be honest. All right. Quick variant talk. I mean, so this is an extremely hip short deck. We've got Zabu. We've got uh, Mobius. That's it, which sucks. I want more hips for this deck. I got to get that hip cable. But hey, coming soon is that hip Colson. So I will run. Oh, and the hip Cosmo. I almost forgot the doggy. I'm so sorry. So there's three hips in the deck. Um, I'll get that hip Colson soon. And eventually that hip cable has to show up so I can get it. The other thing I did here that I like is I have the cozy rogue with the cozy devil dino. So they can be cozy friends. That's it. We're done talking about variants for this one. All right. So first, <clears throat> a future patch, which should be next Tuesday with the new season. I believe that is the date that it should be based on the schedule that they always keep. The next patch should have an improvement to Elsa, according to Glenn, answering this question. It is not safe to, but I'm going to work under the assumption until proven otherwise, that this is going to be something like Elsa being a 3-4 that gives plus 2 whenever you fill a location, which will be stellar and immediately give us something to do in the early game that's not Zabu. It goes in every surfer deck forever from then on, and it's just like an ace card that you really, really want to play. That Patriot deck from yesterday would absolutely kill for that card. If you didn't take that Patriot deck from yesterday out, a bunch of people are crushing with it. It's super strong. I keep getting messages about it. It's um just like the standard, uh, it's like the standard Senatora Yasui Patriot list that runs like Eliath, and um, it's going Brood Absorb Man, and then it's running Patriot and Eliath and stuff like that. And the deck is sick. And you should, like, completely play it. Cool. All right. Null. Something is happening with Null. Um, null will still potentially show power, but will count for zero in hand. That's going to break the recent meta deck that uses Dracula to Null. Because something has to give with Null. That's probably the other nerf to destroy. Because Null, the way he is, where he can be reduced by cards like um, Ravona, but... He still carries the power for discards like Dracula is a problem, and it should be one or the other. So apparently that's going to be fixed. Um, it's the plan, I'm assuming, based on the fact that they said they were going to nerf destroy, and then they barely hit Hulkbuster, and they potentially buffed Hulkbuster. I'm assuming that plan is for Tuesday's patch, but what do I know? Maybe they just didn't want to do any more to destroy. Um, I don't expect destroy to go anywhere because of this tiny change. So I would assume that this change pushes Destroy back into the fairer territory because Dracula discarding Null is extraordinarily hard to beat. All right, next up, this isn't the same kind of change, but we've been I've been expecting something to happen to Werewolf, but nope. Werewolf is currently around the top 25 cards on win rate, so he's very unlikely to change. He's inclined to stay with the same power, cost, etc. that he currently has. Um... So I guess we're going to be dealing with a 4-4 Werewolf for the time being. Um, I guess that makes sense because Werewolf should be completely silly with our new Season Pass card, um, whose name? Black Swan. And then the Season Pass after with Hope. Werewolf would be completely nuts with either one of those cards. And given that case, it makes a lot of sense to say, okay, just, just leave him where he is before he gets a bunch of um, cards that like side buff him and see where he is. Plus, top 25 is damn good. He's not the best card in Snap anywhere, but he's still really good. All right, our last deck is Ika's Man-Thing deck. I love this deck. I played it. I think it's crazy strong and really, really cool. It is basically saying I have multiple avenues to win. We can win by saying, Goose, you can't get big stuff down. Well, I've got Zapu or Cheap She-Hulk, so I can get big stuff down. That's an easy win. If you are dropping little stuff, Man-Thing is completely insane. You've got Luke, now a 3-4, to protect all your Man-Thing shenanigans. You've got Moon Girl, and sometimes just going um, Zabu into Moon Girl into, like, 
Rock Slide Korg into Darkhawk Darkhawk is going to win a fair amount of Marvel Snap games. Seems like it's probably good. Armor gives you some protection for those big things and gives you an extra card to um to mess with, destroy with. You can easily run something like Grandmaster, which I'm going to be honest, I'm going to change armor for Grandmaster. You can easily run Grandmaster for more rocks in this deck, or you can run instead um, Quake to change things up, or Shadow King to give you a tech card, whatever you want in that armor slot. You got Quinjet, so the second copy of everything is way cheaper. I mean, it's one cheaper, but it feels like a lot, given that um, you probably have Goose, sorry, Zabu, and everything's cheaper because of that. Sunspot gains a ton of incremental power. Everything here just synergizes so, so well. Um, the buff to Luke is exactly what this deck needed, so you don't have to worry about playing him the Man-Thing lane. You can use Man-Thing as like a 411 to just win a lane when your opponent's filling it with cheap stuff and going, you can't compete here. Well, how about we subtract 8 from your point total here? How about now? All right, so this is our We Vote Wednesday deck. Apparently, y'all wanted a Man-Thing deck. You got it. You need Darkhawk and Zabu. If you don't have Man-Thing, you're stuck cutting Luke, and then you just run a regular Darkhawk deck. You're fine. Um... Check Ika out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Ika underscore MTS. Ika uh, streams fairly regularly and is an absolutely phenomenal player and deck builder. One of the like two to three most underrated players and deck builders in all of Marvel Snap. So Ika had a 75% win rate with this before the freaking Luke Cage buff, which means that this is now better and we should be playing it. Turn one, Quinjet over Korg over Sunspot. Turn two, Zabu is way better than Goose, is way better than Armor. Zabu is a snap condition. Zabu is how this deck wins. Turn three, Zabu, again, very important, over Rock Slide, over Luke. You can also just go Zabu, Moon Girl. You can go Zabu, Man Thing, reasonably well if the opponent's filling a lane. Turn five, pass for She-Hulk. Or drop Zabu, uh, Quinjet, plus Luke or Rock Slide. That's totally fine. And then Man-Thing plus Darkhawk, or two She-Hulks, and a Man-Thing, or Darkhawk. And then you win all the cubes. It's a very, very cool deck once more. All right, quick variant talk. This is the one that has all the hips. We got Sunspot, Korg, Goose, Zabu. We're not counting armor. Luke Cage. Oh, wait, it's only five? Eh, we used to have eight per deck. What are you going to do? All right, five hips. Not bad at all. We've got our real cool uh, rock, paper, scissors, rock slide, my favorite dark hawk. Costume party, moon girl, the completely horrifying man thing, Peach Momoko, She Hulk, and I'm dying for this hip armor to come out. So, fingers crossed, friends. We are finally at looking at our variants for the day. I was not going to buy any of these, but I looked at the zero, I animated this zero. And I bought the zero. It's better than the zero I previously had. It looks really great animated. So I now have this zero. I did the same thing with Human Torch where I looked at it animated and it didn't look cool enough so I didn't buy it. But I now own one Pandart card zero because I think it's really nice. Now, what you get for owning Pandart cards um, is way less than you get for owning the other ones. Straight up, this is less for filling an album out. Partially, probably, because so many of the Pandart cards you can see here um, all but... Three of them that are revealing today are 700 gold, which means they're probably giving us less because it's cheaper to fill, which makes me upset, but what are you going to do? Um, the first is She-Hulk. We have this Pandart She-Hulk. Um, Avatar, which whatever, I don't care about avatars. I don't know about you, but I don't give a crap. Then we have 1,000 tokens, which is, again, it was 2,000 in the last one, right? We have a decent She-Hulk variant, but... Um, I have the Peach Momoko, and I got the really cool one from the web store last month, so, okay. And then there's the decent-ish She-Hulk emote. I'm not for it, but maybe you are. I don't know what to tell you. All right. Certain tiers of patron support come with on-air thanks. Let's thank our patrons. Don't forget to check the Patreon if you'd like to join the tournament. You only have to be on the $1 tier, although obviously if you're higher, there are more perks, and you're obviously able to enter the tournament. We've got models, pretty chill, Fothar Newman, Inc., No Flex, Mandatory Burnout, Matt Conduit, Good Dog Gamer, Keredix Lee, Mikey Hijinks, DG Winfield, Cables, Rob Silverman, Matt H., R Abigail Gieslin, Direwolf, Ocularis, X-Force V, Jay Navarrete, Spike Jones, Koi Ray, Louis Antonez, J.D. McDonaldino, and the homie. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 a.m. in a normal slot for another Snap Take. That one will have weekend mission decks. We're going to announce more creators.
for this major tournament that you can be a part of. And this OTA was a bust, right? Like these, unless we're missing something, this is just like a side OTA to say the bet is healthy. Why don't you try out some more underplayed cards? That's fine. It's not the end of the world. They're usually more impactful than this, but hey, we're in a healthy meta. We're not too sad about it. We appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the Patreon. Don't forget to sub, like, and comment. See you tomorrow. Peace.